Alright guys, now that we understand the basics of pointers, and I also taught you guys how to dereference a pointer to pretty much get the value that it's pointing to, I now want to talk to you guys about arrays and pointers in the real relationship between them. And by the real relationship, I mean that there's more to an array that meets the eye. So quote that, write it on your wall, don't forget it. I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about right now. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a basic array and looping through it and showing you guys the details of each element just like we did in the last tutorial and then after that I'm going to be showing you guys a really cool trick and it's something that is probably going to blow your mind. So of course I'm going to name my array meatballs and it's going to have five elements and set these equal to any number. I'll put my like 7, 9, 43, 21, 3. The elements actually don't even matter. Just make sure you have five integers in there, whatever pops into your head. So now make a basic loop. You know, put i equals zero, i is less than five, and i plus plus. So this is going to loop five times. And for each loop or iteration, we're going to print out this. The first thing is basically we're going to put 0 through 4 in here and this is just a little indicator of what element we're on so since we pretty much have to throw i in there i is going to be 0 to 4 so it's a decimal and then I guess we'll just print each on a new line so tab now for each element I want to show you guys the memory address of each one so percent p and that's going to print the memory address and tab it one more time and the last thing is, of course, each element's value, which is going to be 7, 9, 43, 21, and 3. So those are integers, so we just use percent %d. Now for the first one, we can just throw i in there. Now for the memory address of each one, remember, anytime we want to print out a memory address, we use that ampersand sign and meatballs, and that's i right in there. So that's going to print out the memory address of each element and to print out the value of it, which is right in here, of course we just do that. And I actually want to kick each of these on a new line and let me bump that to a new line too. Do I want to? Actually I'll do this. Right now it'll just print out each of these, but I'll give you guys a real quick indicator of which each one is and this will be good for um if you're just copying and pasting the source code on the forum so the first one is the element the second one is the memory address and the third one is the value and on a new line we'll print everything out so as you can see I made a simple program to loop through each element in the array and it prints out the value of it and also where it's stored the memory address of it but if you remember I already did this in the last couple of tutorials we already saw that variable memory address value this is basic stuff so why the heck would I waste the whole tutorial showing you guys this for an array well it's because of this line right here what I want to do is add one more print statement and inside here actually want to put this between two new lines what I'm going to do is type meatballs in a tab and percent %p. And now, of course, actually let me tab that twice since we have three columns up here. And now, of course, this is going to say meatballs and then it's going to give the memory address of meatballs. So I'm going to print this out and you're like, oh, one second, Bucky, you got a little mistake you told me that whenever you want to print out the memory address of something percent %p you need to use that ampersand sign right there if not then you're gonna have a real bad time but look what happens whenever I run this it prints out the memory address just fine so this is the first kind of key concept I want to talk to you guys about for every array the basic name of it without any elements or brackets after it an array name is just a pointer to the first element in the array so I don't know if you guys noticed that but whenever I ran this 
meatballs, just the name meatballs and nothing else, is equal to 0028 FEF8. Well, if you look up here, that is also the memory address of the first element in the array. So the word meatballs is a pointer to the first element. It kind of blows your mind, but that is why we don't need the ampersand sign because this already is a memory address. We don't need to explicitly tell it to get the memory address because that's what it already is. So just so it sticks in your mind, there it is one more time. Now, another thing I want to point out is what we can do is since this is already a pointer, we can go ahead and dereference it. Now, whenever we dereference this, remember, it basically goes to whoever it's pointing to and it gets the value of it. So if we just dereference the meatballs and nothing else, it would get seven. Kind of weird, but if you watch this tutorial twice, then you're probably going to understand really easily what's going on. So let me add some comments right here so you guys don't get confused. I'll put array names um, are just So array names are just pointers to the first element. Now down here I'll put dereference it. I always have to remember to put the extra E. So um, I guess I'll just print this out right now. So everything looks good except on this line what I'm going to print out is asterisk meatballs which is basically going to dereference meatballs and check it out. And that is the pointer and we actually want D because it's getting the value and check it out. So meatballs, just the name meatballs is the memory address of the first element, meatball zero. So whenever we dereference meatballs, what it does is it goes to wherever it's pointing to, which is this one, meatball zero, and it gets the value of it. So dereference meatballs equals seven. Now the last thing I want to point out is a concept that we're going to be using a lot and it's also a syntax that you're going to be seeing a lot whenever people dereference um, arrays specifically, it's this. Whenever we dereference meatballs plus two, put that code right over here. So let me run this and look at it. Now, what we're going to see, a dereference meatballs plus two is 43. And I'll show you guys why this is. What happens whenever we made this an array is we're basically saying, fill each block in memory big enough for an int. So what we're saying is we're going to dereference meatballs plus two. So go to this pointer, which is basically a pointer to meatball zero, add two to it one, two, and since it's the reference, get the value of that, which is 43. So again, we can do this all the way for meatballs one, two, three, or four, because we have five elements in our array. So I know that this is kind of confusing, but if you either watch this tutorial again, um, or just, I don't know, just try typing everything out yourself, then you guys are going to see basically what I'm talking about. So just to sum up everything for you guys, the core concept of this tutorial is this. The array name has a special meaning. An array name is just a pointer to the first element in that array. Now, whenever you dereference the array name, what it does is it goes to that element and it gets the value of it. So a dereferenced array name is the first value in your array. And of course, if you want to loop through or get other values in the array, you just type the array name plus however many you want, dereference that, and it gives you the value. So I guess the only thing you guys are wondering about now is, okay, this is interesting. Arrays are pretty much like pointers, but still, what the heck can I do with them? This is just like information that I'm never going to use, so who the heck cares? Well, I know I promised that in this tutorial I'll show you guys something useful, but in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be beginning showing you guys why all of this information is actually um, useful whenever you're making programs. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and study this when it's stuck in your brain. You're ready to move on to the next video. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.